Hello everyone, I am Shilaka Desh Pandey and welcome to my YouTube channel. Our today's topic is oscillator unit in embedded systems. So let's get started with the topic. So first point is what is microprocessor and microcontroller made up of? See any microprocessor or any microcontroller is made up of the sequential and combinational circuits. There are some sequential circuits and there are some combinational circuits present inside the microcontroller. Now what is sequential circuit and what is combinational circuit? For that you have to refer the books of digital electronics. In digital electronics we have seen the difference between the sequential circuits and combinational circuit, D, D flip flop, latches and all that. So if you are interested in sequential and combinational uh, circuits you have to study the digital electronics. This course is related with embedded systems. So I will only target the embedded systems. So microprocessor and microcontroller is made up of various sequential circuits and various combinational circuits. Okay. Next point. Okay. Now instruction execution in the microprocessor and microcontroller. See. The instruction execution in the microcontroller and microprocessor is in with synchronization with the clock signals. Means instructions are getting processed and instructions are getting executed in the microprocessor or controller because there is a clock signal. Okay. And this clock signal is compared with the heartbeat of humans. See, clock signal, why it is compared? Because the heart is responsible for generating beat in the living organism. Whereas the oscillator unit in the embedded system is responsible for generating the clock signals which are necessary for proper functioning of the processor or controller. So this oscillator unit is compared with the heart of the uh, living being. Okay, the way heart supplies blood to all the body, body parts and they work properly. So similarly in the microprocessor and controller we require a oscillator unit which supplies clock signal to all the parts of processor so that they will function properly okay fine so let's see the next next point now uh, there is built-in oscillator unit in some microprocessor and uh, some microcontroller there is a built-in oscillator unit okay and that oscillator unit is uh, inside the uh, I mean to say uh, it is already built in. There is no need to uh, connect it externally. It is already present inside the microprocessor or controller and it will require the quartz crystal uh, uh, for its proper functioning. That is quartz crystal is connected externally for the proper functioning. Okay. And uh, that quartz crystal, how does it appear? Uh, the quartz crystal is inside the metal case and that metal case is having protruding two legs. Okay, so quartz crystal is connected externally and uh, oscillator unit is present internally inside the processor or the controller. We can also use a ceramic resonator instead of the quartz crystal. Okay, to generate the clock signals. Now, the speed of processor is dependent on the clock frequency. Means what? See, if you want the processor to work at a very high speed, you can increase the clock frequency up to certain limit and increase the speed of processor. Means if the clock frequency of the processor is more, the speed of the processor is more. If the clock frequency of the processor is less, speed of the processor is less. So, speed of the processor is dependent on the clock frequency. Okay. But that doesn't mean that we have to blindly increase the clock frequency to increase the speed of the processor. Why? Let's see, okay, upper threshold value of maximum clock. See, every processor or controller is having a certain upper threshold value which gives the uh, value above which we cannot increase the clock frequency. If the clock frequency goes above the upper threshold value, the processor or controller may behave uh, in the abnormal way or it may, be, be, become, it may become non-functional. It may not function properly, okay. So we cannot increase the clock frequency above the maximum threshold value. Okay? Clear? So there is some limit to increase the clock frequency also. We cannot go beyond that limit. Okay? So power consumption of the microprocessor directly proportional to clock frequency means what? 
uh, the every processor consume power for its for functioning as we consume food so that we can function properly we can talk properly we can do work properly we consume food to attain the power so similarly the uh, clock frequency uh, and power are related if the clock frequency of the uh, processor is more it will require more power power consumption of the processor will increase if the clock frequency is more whereas the power consumption of the processor will decrease if the clock frequency is less so power consumption of the processor or controller is directly proportional to the clock frequency okay now what is the frequency of clocks i have described it it in one of my previous videos and uh, what is the frequency of the signal and what is the frequency of a digital signal clock if you want to know the definition of the uh, frequency of the signal you can refer the basic electronics books okay fine so as i told you when the power consumption increases clock frequency is also more and if the clock frequency is decrease power consumption will automatically decrease so this is about the oscillator unit in the embedded systems or oscillator unit in the microcontroller or a microprocessor so the diagram which i have drawn on the right side is of the uh, is representing the oscillator unit inside the microcontroller so inside the microcontroller there is a oscillator unit we have connected the quartz crystal in the middle and there are two capacitors so this was all about the oscillator unit i hope you like the video please like share and subscribe my channel thank you for watching bye bye